Well, it looks like the newly crowned King Charles is feeling his power. He is showing that he's the real star of the royal family. And the publicity-obsessed traitors Harry and Meghan are pathetic losers, according to well-placed palace officials. A senior courtier reports the royal gloves are off. His majesty is done with the drama that's ripped the family apart and threatened the monarchy since the Duke and Duchess of Sussex quit and moved to America two years ago. He has taken control and is showing his rebel son and daughter-in-law who's boss. Essentially, right after the coronation was over, the 74-year-old king fired the first salvo across Meghan and Harry's bow, making a surprise appearance on American Idol, along with his wife, Queen Camilla. Katy Perry and Lionel Richie performed at the coronation concert, and they felt surprised when the newly crowned king and queen walked into the throne room of Buckingham Palace, and Charles said on the live show feed, I just wanted to check how long you will be using this room. And of course, people across the Atlantic absolutely loved this little comment. It was a master stroke of one-upmanship by His Majesty, according to the palace source. He delivered a very direct message to the Sussexes, don't mess with me. It was no accident he chose to appear on a U.S. TV show. That's Meghan's turf, and I'm told both Charles and Camilla knew it would get her attention, and her goat. In only a few minutes, Charles managed to upstage the former mattress actress and show that he's the real celeb. Meanwhile, Meghan is floundering in the Z-list ranks, and he's not finished yet. Charles is now in charge, says the courtier. His new offensive against Meghan and Harry is working, and their apparent plan to bring them the monarchy is failing miserably, according to new poll numbers. In spite of Meghan accusing the royal family of being racist and cruel in Harry's horrible memoir, Spare, and also their royal bashing Netflix docuseries, the people of the UK are still supporting the monarchy. Over 20 million UK viewers watched the coronation. That dwarfed the 17.9 million who watched Meghan and Harry's 2018 wedding. And the palace source says, if Harry and Meghan thought their scandalous revelations and allegations would turn the country against the royals, it's backfire big time. It's their popularity that's plummeted on both sides of the Atlantic. And behind closed doors, the king and queen could not be more thrilled. He is the oldest monarch ever crowned, and so it's not like Charles has a very long time to establish his legacy. Destructive royal traitors should remember that he's got the power to make or break them, and he's not afraid of using it. Another interesting bit of news that could spell trouble for Meghan and Harry is the Spotify exec, Don Ostroff, who signed a multi-million dollar deal with Harry and Meghan, left as hundreds of jobs were cut. So that's basically millions of dollars right down the drain, and very little to show for it. I still remember back in 2021 what happened. There were so many people who were shocked when they saw the figures that were being tossed around, $30 million, I think, and penciled in on the promise of future revenue. And what exactly did Spotify get for all that money? Well, at least in 2021, not much more than bragging rights to have a couple of fake royals on the books. So after many months of absolutely nothing, Spotify decided to hire their own people to help Meghan and Harry with producing something, anything really. So they managed to put together a first piece of work from the two of them, a 35-minute long holiday podcast that featured people like Elton John and Deepak Chopra, Tyler Perry, James Corden, and some others too. And then after that little joint venture at Christmas, there was radio silence, in spite of the fact that there were still mega millions of revenue still to bring in to pay for Megan and Harry's contract. And what about Megan's series archetypes? How much bang for buck did that actually produce for Spotify? Well, after a pretty long wait, they eventually got 12 episodes out of Megan. Starting off large on the 23rd of August in 2022 with Mariah Carey, followed by Serena Williams in episode 2. And that was basically it. So Paris Hilton got a gig with somebody, I'm not sure who, in episode four. And then already by the sixth episode, three basically unknown guests were being shoved in because essentially somebody had to stop Megan from talking about herself for a whole episode. Serena and Mariah basically found during their discussions with Megan that she didn't care about what they had to say. She only wanted to hear herself talk. And well, by the ninth and tenth episodes, nobody had ever heard of the guests other than a few niche markets in the U.S. maybe. And even most of those were at that point just scratching their heads thanks to Megan's self-rantings. So Archetypes finished on November 29th after its 12th episode hit the skids with somebody or another, nobody very memorable. 
In Siding Off, Megan was supposedly cryptic about the future of the series in 2023 after it concluded in 2022. Yeah, I'm sure she was. I tried to listen to a little bit of it, but honestly, folks, it was rough. It seemed to me like Megan was doing her best to reinforce the stereotypes like Dragon Lady and the myth of the angry black woman. Because, of course, Megan wasn't really interested in her guests or in their issues. She had to make sure that she was front and center in every single episode. And honestly, until Megan started talking about it, I had never even heard of the Dragon Lady myth. And I think the podcasts were not made for markets outside the U.S. anyway, and even then for very few people actually, outside of Megan's woke brigade. So what exactly has Megan produced for Spotify since Archetypes? I mean, has anybody been able to confirm that a second series of Archetypes is going to happen? Anybody? Well, of course not. Now we are headed for June of 2023, and it seems like there is still radio silence. Well, radio silence, except for the announcement that Don Ostra, the streaming company's chief content and advertising officer, has decided to depart Spotify, as they put it. This information is coming from the chief executive of Spotify. So naturally, somebody, and probably a lot more other than Don, has had to pay for the revenue shortfall that was caused by signing Megan and Harry for a lot of money. Let's remember, they can't really produce anything that more than about three people are interested in. I gotta tell you, though, I did kind of appreciate the way that Spotify's chief explained it in typical U.S. corporate speak. In hindsight, I was too ambitious in investing ahead of our revenue growth. All right, well, I guess, yeah, hindsight is 2020, right? But where exactly was the foresight? Where was the vision? Is that not what the shareholders are paying a lot of money for? I think he could have been a little more honest and said something like this. Due to my lack of foresight, I was too ambitious in investing in a couple of idiots whose titles were not interesting to anyone other than myself and who don't have anything to offer that may have actually made some money for us so that we could pay them and our staff and keep a little money to pass on to our shareholders. Now that would have been a breath of fresh air, wouldn't it? But of course, they're not going to say something like that. And we all knew when we heard back in 2021 what he had done, we knew this was going to fail. And it seems like, unfortunately, by 2023, the rest of the people are having to pay for this mistake. But I guess that is what life is like in the corporate world of America. And what about Megan and Harry's brand? Well, of course, it's going to take a big hit, I would imagine, for a brand that's already suffering. Or perhaps it's already dead and nobody informed them. And then what about Netflix? They have to be feeling nervous right now. Clearly, Meghan and Harry did not get any content from the coronation. Such a big disappointment for their Netflix bosses. Maybe their desperation showed up in New York, where they were caught chasing paths through the streets for two hours. In the meantime, Meghan just keeps on picking up awards that she's paid for by being the most amazing woman on this planet. Imagine that. <laughs> 